This is the T400, and this is the T600. The T600 is more powerful, the T400 costs less. But which is the better value? Only one way to find out. Oh hey, Tech Dweeb here. Thanks for clicking on the video today. You'd be forgiven for thinking these are the same GPU. Uh, they look the same, don't they? But the discerning eye can tell them apart. See, uh, this one says T400 and this one says T600. A pretty big difference, right? <laughs> uh, both of these are low profile GPUs and they don't require external power, so they work great for those small form factor machines, like the Dell Optiplex or the Lenovo small form factor machines. I'm actually gonna be doing a video on making a budget gaming build using the T400 or the T600 in a small form factor office PC, so get subscribed so you don't miss that. They look similar, but they're very different GPUs in terms of performance. I've made separate videos on both of the, these cards. I put the T400 against the GT1030, and the T600 against the 1650 and the 1050 Ti, and I made a video about the RTX features of these cards. All those videos are linked below. But one thing we haven't looked at yet is how these cards compare to each other. Which one's the better bag for the buck? The T400 is less powerful, but it costs less. The T600 is better, but it costs more. We need to put them head to head to see who comes out on top. And how do we do that? Well, I think you know what's coming, don't you? It's time for another GPU Smackdown. 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 In this corner, don't let the $105 price tag fool you. It packs a punch. It's the NVIDIA T400. And in this corner, weighing in at 185 bucks, the big boy. Well, not actually big. It's like the same size as the other one, but it's bigger because it costs more and it's better. It's, it's the T600. They're going head to head to see who's gonna take home the crowd. I mean the trophy, I guess. Who's better? This one? Maybe this one? Wait, which one's which? I don't even know anymore. But who cares? Let's do this thing. Smack down. Smack down. Smack them down. Yeah. Yeah, smack down. Smack down. Ugh, fight, fight it. Yeah. Let's meet the contenders. So yeah, the T400 cost me 105 bucks. It has two gigabytes of GDDDR6 VRAM, a 1425 megahertz boost clock, 384 CUDA cores, and a 30 watt TDP. And the T600 cost me 185 bucks. And it has a 1335 megahertz boost clock, so less than the T400, curiously enough. 4 gigabytes of GDDDR6 VRAM, 640 CUDA cores, and a 40 watt TDP. The prices of these GPUs vary wildly between regions. I only recommend any GPU based on the performance compared to the price. How many FPS per dollar do you get? That's what really matters. I have no idea how this is going to go, so I'm not even going to bother making a prediction. We need to put them to the test to find out. You know what that means. It's time for another GPU Smackdown. Smackdown! Smackdown! Oh, wait, I already did the intro, didn't I? <laughs> I just love that intro. <laughs> on to the gaming tests. I I'm not recording on the PC while I do these tests, by the way. The footage you see on screen was captured separately, so the benchmark results will be unimpeded. Just pure, raw GPU performance goodness. So, starting off with a bit of an older game, considering it came out in 2013, but it's still a great looking game, it's GTA 5, running at 1080p with the normal settings, which are the low settings in this game, the T400 got an average FPS of 93. Not bad, right? I mean, it's not a super demanding game, especially in the normal settings. Still, that's a great FPS. The T400 costs 105 bucks, so that means that it gives us an FPS per dollar value of 0.88. But what about the T600? Well, the same benchmark run at the same resolution with the same settings. The T600 gets an average of 170 FPS. Yeah, that's freaking crazy. The T600 is almost twice as powerful as the T400, at least in GTA 5. But it also costs a lot more. In terms of value, at 185 bucks, that means our T600 got an FPS per dollar value of 0.91. Wow, that's actually pretty close. Pretty darn close, actually. The T600 came out ahead, but by a tidy margin. Just like 4% better value. Barely any different at all. 
that's kind of what you'd hope would be the case since these cards are made by the same company and their prices should reflect their performance. But we've seen some weird GPU pricing over the last few years to say the least. So it's hard to know what's actually a good value until you calculate those important FPS per dollar values. But one test isn't enough to draw conclusions. We're doing five tests today. So next up on our test bench is The Witcher 3. You guys know how much I love this game. And it's an older game, not as old as GTA 5. This one came out in 2015, running at 1080p with a low preset and looking very good even at these low settings, in my opinion. Our T400 got an average of 41 FPS. That's not bad. I'd probably bump this down to 900p if I were playing on the T400. At 105 bucks, that means that we get an FPS per dollar value of 0.39. Our T600 did much better at these settings, pulling out an impressive 75 FPS. This GPU is definitely enough to run at 1080p, medium-ish settings. Again, the T600 costs 185 bucks, which means that we get an FPS per dollar value of 0 0.40. Oh, wow, that's like pretty much the same. Okay, this is kind of weirding me out. I've done a few of these GPU SmackDown videos and I've never come across two GPUs that are so evenly matched. However, GTA 5 and to some extent The Witcher 3 are more CPU limited. So let's get into some more modern games that put more strain on the GPU and, and see how that changes things. <laughs> Moving ahead in time to 2018 with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is my favorite game to benchmark GPUs with because it looks great and it is well optimized. It has a ton of settings and it's almost entirely GPU bound. Let's see how our T400 does. Red, I got 900p with a low preset. In my benchmark red, I got an average FPS of 32. That's fine. You know, I I've said this many times about this game, but it's a third person action exploration game that lends itself well to be played with a controller. I think anything above 30 FPS with settings that look good is just fine in this game. 32 FPS on a $105 GPU beats we get a value of 0 0.30 FPS per dollar. Now the T600 did much better on the FPS. 63 FPS. That's almost double, which means the T600 got an FPS per dollar value of 0.34. Now we're seeing a bit of a difference. I, I had a feeling this might happen. As we get into more GPU bound games, the, the real difference between these will start to show. The T600 is 12% ahead in value here. That's not so far off, is it? The T600 is a, a bit of a better value so far, but that's why I like to test at least five games so we don't have some big outliers that skew the results too much. Let's see how we do in God of War. We're at like a 900p here with the low preset. This game has FSR and DLSS to let you run at lower resolutions, upscaled with filters to get some better performance. I, I bit these cards do support DLSS, but you probably don't want to enable it. I, I actually made a video on that topic. There's a link to that below, but I didn't enable any FSR or anything here. This is just raw GPU power. The T400 managed just 26 FPS. That's not great. Yeah, if I was playing this game on the T400, I'd probably go with 900p and balanced FSR to get up to around 40 FPS. 26 FPS is just barely not playable, in my opinion, especially considering those 1% lows, which you could definitely feel. The T400 gets an FPS per dollar value of 0.25. The T600 did much better at 45 FPS. It's not powerful enough to run at 60 FPS, even at 900p, which is a shame, but this game is pretty darn demanding and it looks freaking amazing. 45 FPS is playable though, and that means that the T600 got an FPS per dollar value of 0.24. Whoa, the, the T600 actually did worse in the value calculation than the T400. Okay, okay. I thought, I thought the T600 had this in the bag, but apparently not. Well, our next game should definitely help us decide this once and for all. Cyberjug 2077. This is the most GPU intensive game that I have. It, it doesn't run well on anything, to be honest. And it's a first person shooter RPG game. And I always prefer higher FPS in my first person games. I had to run with 720p low settings to get anything even remotely playable on the T400. And even still, we average just 25 FPS. That's pretty bad on its own, but look at those 1% lows. 
just seven FPS. This was a very stuttery experience. I could tell you that much. To play this game, you definitely need to run with some FSR enabled and it would look pretty bushy at 720p with FSR. Still, I bet some people would play like this. I would if I had no other choice. Anyways, 25 FPS means we get 0.24 FPS per dollar on the T400. But how did the T600 do? Well, much better, obviously. We ended up getting 53 FPS. Nice, that's actually playable. And what's more important is the much improved 1% loads. This was definitely a smoother feeling experience. I suspect it's the VRAM. CyberJunk doesn't like these two gigabyte GPUs, even at the low settings, unfortunately. Well, a 53 FPS means the T600 gets a 0.28 FPS per dollar value. That's 17% better than the T400. And value aside, it's a much more enjoyable experience playing this game on the T600. I don't think anyone expected the T400 to do well in CyberJunk, but at least now we have the data to see how it does compared to the T600. I didn't know what to expect coming into these tests, to be honest. It really could have gone either way, and it almost did there until the end. But overall, across all our tests, the T400 got an average FPS of 43.4, which means it comes out with an average FPS per dollar value of 0.41. Compare that to our T600, which got an average FPS of 81.2, which means that it gets an FPS per dollar value of 0.44. So the T600 is the better value, at these prices at least. But even still, the, the difference is tiny, just 7%. This is way closer than I expected it would be. These cards are basically the same value proposition, more or less depending on the prices in your local area. I think this shows that they're both a good value for the performance you get for the price you'll pay. Honestly, if you're playing mostly older games or you don't mind lower resolutions, or if you play eSports titles, the T400 will do just fine for you. Actually, I'm gonna be doing a separate video on the T400 in eSports titles, so get subscribed so you don't miss that. And if you need more horsepower for the types of games you like to play, then, then go for the T600. There's barely any difference in their value. So I, I guess the T600 gets my recommendation here, but honestly, they're so close that either is a good choice. Just go for whichever you can afford or find at a good price. You'll, you'll be happy with their performance of either of these GPUs compared to the price. And that brings us to the end. Did you expect it to be as close as it was? I guess I should have expected it, but I was kind of feeling like one would pull way ahead for some reason. I'm actually happy that they're similar values, so that way I could suggest either as a good choice for whatever GPU budget category you're looking at. Do you have the T400 or the T600? Are you happy with how they're doing? Are you looking at either of these GPUs? What prices are you seeing them at? I'm super curious to know what you think. Please let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you liked the video, or the thumbs down button if you didn't like it for some reason. Check me out on Patreon, link below. I have some fun perks you might be interested in. Stop by my public Discord server to say hi sometime if you do that sort of thing. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm TechTweet. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.